Well, once in what seems like every millennium, I get a nap. And, uh, you know, I was certainly in no position or mood to have a nap Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, I can tell you that. But uh, Wednesday uh, was a good day for the stable. We raced five horses. We had three winners and two second place finishers. It doesn't happen very often. And, um, and uh, it was a great day. So Thursday I wanted to get up. We had Sebastian Yu to qualify. Now Sebastian Yu is never a cakewalk, ever. When he's bad, he's disgusting. When he's good, he's pretty good, especially when we can put him in the right class. Now, um, went out today and he made a break. I figured I, I kind of knew why he made a break. Um, I brought him in. No, his day is not over. Um, we took some equipment off of him. We put some equipment on him, different equipment. And we and I schooled him off the car, 27 and a piece to quarter. I didn't want to go a whole other mile with him, but he was going to get a good quarter into him. 27 and three, never put a step in. And I had said to Tim after, it's partially my fault. Uh, we had made a change with Sebastian Yu after the two wins. We decided we were going to roll the dice and put him in the Stallion Series. He came up sick about six days before we thought we could treat him up and have him good, ready for the stake race. It didn't work out and he made a break. And then subsequently his next start made a break. When it's almost like this horse's confidence, there's a short fuse, right? When it's good, he's a layover in the condition claimer, or even in the non horses too, if we want to race him there. When he's not, he is horrible. And um, today he didn't feel horrible. Today he felt mechanically there was an issue. So I come in, I'd said to Tim, no, 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 we're not, we're not, he's not done for the day. Uh, we're gonna change some stuff on him, add some stuff to him. I said, I'm pretty sure it'll work, just the way he feels. And I know the horse pretty good, as you know. So I went out and 27 and three first quarter, he was perfect. Uh, I guess I can pass that as saying, you know what? There's not going to be a whole lot of people lining up to claim him when we get him back, and he will qualify next week, and he will race his first start, and he'll likely win in that class, but um, he's a finicky bugger, I can tell you that. So the the transition from horrible to good was minimal, and there, when you talk about a, a razor-thin line between <laughs> between a horse being good and bad, hits thin with Sebastian Yu. So, um, so, uh, I had my nap, get up, had a shave, had a shower, um, come up, there's a little coffee place up here on the hill, behind the meadows, I'm gonna have a coffee, and settle in, because I got a big night ahead of me now, um, I wanna get, um, I wanna get as many shares of the horses we bought sold out, so that's behind us. It's gone very, very well. I think we have three or four sold out. And there's going to be another one sold out in the next day or so. So we can put that behind us, uh, which is good. I'm excited about doing that. We do have some horses selling online on the weekend that I had a couple. I had a couple of them looked at. Uh, one of them is Jazzy Judy, who was a winner yesterday. Now, it wasn't pretty. She wasn't like she was a ballerina, but um, she did it. She, she, uh, there's two horses stayed trotting. She's always focused. So and that's what I love about Jazzy Judy is that she looked really good in Northfield. Now Harrington's probably a flatter track. I talked to Mr. King after Jim King after, and you know, the transition from tracks, I think was a, was a bit of a culture shock for, um, for Jazzy Judy. She was rough in the mile in quite a few places, but stayed at it. And when push came to shove, she just heaved a 30 and a piece set last quarter at them and got up to win. Winners win, right? And it's uh, number one. Everybody texted me. A bunch of people texted me. Number one rule when driving trotters, keep them trotting. And uh, Victor Kirby did a great job yesterday. Jim King did a good job. And you know what? Jazzy Judy did a great job. Her full sister is selling online on OnGate uh, Saturday, Sunday, um, and that OnGate sale now. I paid twenty-two thousand for Jazzy Judy last year. We're not paying twenty-two thousand for a sister. Uh, the program. I'm not sure of the eligibilities this year. Last year, the selling point for Jazzy Judy was there's only seventeen horses eligible to the whole program. They go for twenty thousand, which she won yesterday. They go for twenty thousand again, which she likely could win. A little touch up, and the final goes for a hundred. Then they go to Dover, five eighths mile track, twenty twenty a hundred also. So Jazzy Judy will have six starts this year. Remember. This is a filly that fractured her knee, 
had a chip. And, and fracture sounds good. You know, I might share a gun and say, ah, she had a, a chip in her knee. To get that chip, she'd have to fracture it. A piece would have to break off. We had orthoscopic surgery done. Took that chip out. Stood her in the stall, put her in the pool, trained her back, and I made it. I told you when we had the operation done on Chazzy Judy that this timeline was thin. There was no, ah, she gets sick for a couple of weeks. Either she could train down in the time frame we put out, or she could not. And she did it, and uh, I got a lot of respect for horses that do their work as well as they can. Now, I thought Jazzy Judy was probably ready for 2-1 when she left Northfield. I don't know the difference between Northfield and, and Harrington. I got a pretty good idea now. It's a little bit. So, um, you know, she's got the stake race next week and moving on. So her sister, I'm a little interested in. A couple of horses I'm interested in. Uh, one of our clients went and looked at Jazzy Judy's sister for me. Said she looked good. Um, I had a little video done of her. Um, so a little, I guess, a little appetizer heading into Lexington. Now, here's the billion-dollar question. What are we going to do at Lexington? Uh, I mean, I've told everybody we're going to take this sale on a uh, this season on a sale-by-sale -sale basis. We're going to put out forms. I'm going to show you some horses I like. Now, as far as the actual videos, I will be in Lexington two days before, and I will look at every single horse we're supposed to look at. I will do a video for every single horse we're supposed to look at. Um, where that leads us, I don't know. Um, we do have some people, it was, every year this happens, and it's it's always a great feeling, have some people come out of the woodwork and say, Anthony, I want to spend uh, one gentleman in particular I, I didn't even know was really that interested in working with the stable. He owns a, a share or two here or there, um, owns a lot of horses with other people, and um, wanted to buy a horse that I really wanted to buy, but ultimately it boiled down to um, value. And regardless if I had uh, 50 or 60 percent of the horse sold at a higher number, then I, now if you go back and look at the forms, if you're a client, you go back and look at the forms, or you look at the forms they're going to put out, it gives you the ability to put a price point in. The price point I had, and I don't want to say the name of the horse because a lot of people, including me, were hoping we could get him and we didn't. Uh, the price point I put on the horse was X. The gentleman in question had said he would take 30% of the horse up to a lot higher than X. And I, I can't do that though, right? I can't tell everybody, I believe this horse is worth, let's say, 30 or 40,000. And then keep going into the 50s. You know, I, I, I'll stretch sometimes. I stretched $3,000 on Isa 10. I stretched uh, $3,000 on Purple Aura from what I said they were worth. But when you get into fifteen or twenty thousand dollars, kind of runs against what what I've said all along. We have price points, we have hard lines, and uh, it was really nice to see somebody uh, that I hadn't talked to in a bit that I wasn't really, I didn't really know was interested in buying horses with the stable, and maybe that person will throughout Harrisburg and Lexington. So uh, the reason I bring this up is every year we have a number of people that want to put in, uh, let's say, a little bit more money and look at. Swinging for the fence, right? That's what I call it when you're going to go and buy a, a six-figure horse or a horse that's going to be a little bit higher. And um, we've never bought one, right? The, the most I've ever spent on a horse, I think, was Miss Meringue last year. And although it didn't turn out the way we wanted this year, I still think Miss Meringue is pointed towards a, a fairly decent to the sky's the limit type sophomore season. So she had three or four wins. We put her away really fresh. Really, anyway, it doesn't matter. Um... All every year we've put forth a, a proposal to buy a expensive horse, and we've never got one. Not one year, never have got one. And it's not that I'm excited too, but I'm, I'm every year I'm excited with the with the proposal, the opportunity to make a little bit of a splash. Even though I've always said this is a tough game to be buying six figure horses in, I can't make a business model for it. I can't. Um, but if you buy it, buy a horse that's supposed to be good and it turns out to be really good, I guess. That's the gratification in its own right, right? It's it. I guess theoretically, when you're talking about the the math, it should be easier to see a hundred thousand or a two hundred thousand dollar horse win the Metro or the North American Cup than it is a twenty or thirty thousand dollar horse. And I would be curious to see uh, the breakdown of all the horses that won the North American Cup, Meadowlands, Pace, Little Brown Jug. There's some homework for our analytical, and I know you guys love puzzles. I would like a report of the last twenty years. The yearling prices of the horses that won the Little Brown Jug, 
the North American Cup, and the Meadowlands Pace. That's what I would like to have. Now, regardless if that average is $84,000, I still can't make an argument to buy them because even though that horse that won the Little Brown Jug or the Meadowlands Pace, or the Hamiltonian for that matter, even though that horse won that race, there is a ton of horses that cost the same amount or more that did not. Don't forget, I don't mean to, to throw salt in anyone's wounds, but there's two million dollar horses bought last year. One qualified, got interfered with, and didn't race again, right? The other one, not so good. Not so good at all. And that happens, that's horse racing. You know, if you're, if you're in a position where you can buy a expensive horse, regardless of the outcome, it's not going to make you slip into depression, that's that's great good for you I mean that's that's a I'm sure it's a great feeling <laughs> I mean uh, I get beaten a condition claimer and I get mad <laughs> my horse made a regular qualifier today and I wasn't fit to talk to for 20 minutes I can only imagine how the people feel that own that horse but that's that's racing right the beauty of it is is that my jazz can win on jug on jug at day and um, that's that's what makes this game so good you guys saw how mad I was <laughs> Sunday Monday, Tuesday, you could tell, many of you know me very well by now, you could tell, I was not fit to be joked with on Wednesday, and when my jazz won, I just had a smile from ear to ear, and that's what racing does for all of us, that's why we love it. So, uh, when it comes to Lexington, if you have horses you want me to look at, um, just drop me a line, I'd be very, very interested to know what our clients are looking at, you know what I like and what I don't like, and, and to be very, very clear um, be forewarned. There's a lot of times I'll just tell you I'm not buying that particular sire. I'm not buying in that jurisdiction. We don't spend a lot of money in New York. We will. We'll buy a couple of horses in New York. We're not spending a ton of money in New York or New Jersey. Just It's a different mix for us, right? It's hard. It's hard. In Indiana, I like Indiana a lot, but it's hard to get our people on the ground in Indiana. And it's hard for me to get to Indiana also. I thought I had Danny O'Brien talked into going to Indiana this year, and then he went and broke his leg. I couldn't get him there. So it's not that Doug didn't do a good job. It's just it's just the way it worked out. It just didn't work out. Very good man, very good horseman, and, and uh, we may do business in the future, but it didn't work out for us this year. You look at Ohio, Pennsylvania. I can sit in Pennsylvania. Tim and I can go over the horses, horse by horse by horse. Jason and I go over the horses, horse by horse. I can talk to Harry, Kevin, and, and uh, Mario on the phone. Just tough. Right, you guys see how tough the the game is as far as uh, as far as being able to maneuver in a, in a in as a fluid way as we'd like to. There's just not enough hours in the day. So Ohio will likely be our biggest jurisdiction. Ontario probably close behind. Pennsylvania will do some business in again. And Indiana, New York will get a little drink also. Maybe New Jersey. I do like Trixton's, even though I know they're not fashionable and they're not Muscle Hill and they're not Walner. We do got one that I really like. We get a couple that, that are okay. Um, and the one thing about Trixton's is, unfortunately for the people that breed Trixton's, they will be very affordable this year because not a lot of people are looking for them. So uh, that leads into a conversation we'll have in another video about a particular Trixton later on in the season. But for now, we have Lexington coming up. Who would like to participate? Who would like to be a part of it? Uh, it's not for the faint of heart. And I am, as you can tell by now, I am very, very careful about where I walk and where I'm going to walk the rest of the fall. I want to make sure that we get all the sales paid for. I'm going to be reaching, and now that it looks like the breeding sales are a little stronger, I have bet the wrong horse. I have marketed and advertised to the breeders saying, hey, if you're going to get slaughtered, we want to work with you. But what happens if they don't get slaughtered? What happens if horse racing is some bizarre industry that just does not follow financial standards. I don't know what's going on in the world. But how in the name of hell can you have the Ohio Select Sale up so much, up so much in the middle of a pandemic? I don't know. I don't understand it. But it is what it is. So I have to go into Lexington. I have to switch gears now. We put our marketing and advertising and and thought process into working with breeders and they don't need to work with us potentially no so uh, I'm gonna reach out to some of them though that I know quite well and say listen we're we're um, we're looking to put horses in our barn but we're gonna do it in a very conservative way this fall I'm not gonna be chewing my nails at Christmas 
you know, wondering how we're going to put all this together for the spring. I've done that in the past and I'm okay with it usually, but this year, you know, I think we're going to have less horses. We had 60 plus last year, probably going to have 30 plus this year, but, um, let's turn them into the best 30 we can get. And if a private horse has come along and we get up near 40, then great. But it's looking like it's probably going to be 30. We have 12 right now. Wait, 9, 10, 11, 12. Yeah, 12 right now. Um, I did purchase a horse privately uh, who will be arriving at the bar on Friday and will be in the horse as we break on Saturday. He's a royalty for life trotting colt, and you will meet him tomorrow. No, you'll meet him Saturday. But you will meet him. Um, so I need to focus on, uh, Lexington now moving forward shortly after that. If you're an Ohio owner, be fair warned. There's a ton of horses for sale that are Ohio breds in Lexington. And then right after Lexington, you have the Buckeye sale. I would like to get to 20 Ohio breds, 20. We're at 10 right now, 10. So, um, we still have to work on Ontario. We still have to work on the other jurisdictions. Now, let's say we get to 18 or 20 for Ohio. We get to 10 or 12 for Ontario, maybe 15. Let's say 13, split it in the middle. So now we're at 31. Okay, I'm wrong. We're at 31. Uh, Pennsylvania will probably be 4 or 5, 36, maybe another one. But let's leave it at 36. Let's round that back to 35 just for argument's sake. And then we pick up a couple of New York breads, maybe a New Jersey bread. So I was wrong. We'll probably get to 38 if things go good. But that depends on our clients. I'm not putting you on the spot. I'm not saying, please, please, please. But I would like you to come forward and say, listen, this is what I'm looking to do this season, Anthony. And I've had a great dialogue with a, with a large number of you out there. But I need more dialogues. This is what I'd like to do. This is what I'd like to spend. Or quite frankly, Anthony, I'm not really interested in buying yearlings this year. All three of those conversations are perfect. Exactly what I need to see. So... Make no mistake, Lexington, uh, you know, like the end of a vacation is going to slam into us very, very soon. Um, I don't have a ton of horses on my list right now. I have to send out a couple of emails as I want to clean up Ohio today. As I do that, uh, I'm going to shift gears into Lexington. I'm going to watch the sale uh, take place online tomorrow and see what happens. There's only a couple of horses I have really much interest in. Um, and then we'll we'll move forward in that regard. So uh, Ohio's over, but it's not quite over. Want to get that cleaned up? Um, Lexington is coming, and then a little uh, aside will be this online sale tomorrow. Um, so I'll be reaching out to you guys over the next week for a number of reasons. One, do you want to buy partner with me on these Ohio horses? We just, we're going to end up having shares in maybe three of the nine left, which is cool. That's great. Uh, maybe four horses of the nine left. You're going to meet a new horse uh, that we bought at the sale. And I'll explain what goes on with that horse and why that horse wasn't presented to you with the rest of them. Um, I'll present the, the other horses that we have. We have a muscle mass filly and a, uh, a royalty for life trotting colt. Yes. Royalty for life. Yeah, I think he is. Um... And then I'll also be presenting over the next week the pedigrees of horses I'm looking at. Please feel free to send me horses you're interested in. I love reading those emails. Hey, Anthony, what do you think a hip number so-and-so? What do you think this horse would go? Now, I'm a little sheepish when it comes to giving people uh, financial prices on pedigree pages without seeing the horse. But assuming all things uh, equal and the horse looks like a reasonable horse, at the, with those parameters, I'd be happy to give you what I believe the horse is worth. Plus, they have all the videos up now. I can take a look at the videos of the horses. But I am going to refrain from giving any hard numbers openly until I get a look at the horses themselves. So, that's today's video. Not a lot to talk about on the racing side. We have uh, we had Sebastian You made a break today. The jug is today. It's going, going on right now. I'm going to get a coffee, go back and watch the final. And uh, tomorrow, I'm going to head home to Ontario in the afternoon after I race Ale Sun, Arctic Force, and a number of other horses. Uh, I'm going to head back home to Ontario, Canada. And Saturday, won't be much of a weekend. Time off, visit with the kids. Again, maybe go to the park and eat, have, have, uh, have supper with Amy and the kids. But we have Friday night, I'll be home. Saturday afternoon or morning, we'll be breaking all the horses. Now, the reason I'd said 11 o'clock to everybody was because there is a gentleman at the training center who does have underlying conditions as far as um, 
you know, his health. So I, 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 I kind of want to stay away from him, even though I, obviously I don't have COVID. I'm pretty sure I don't have COVID. I will be getting a COVID test, but I won't have that back until Monday. So I want to stay away from, from that gentleman. He's actually a friend of ours and uh, I want to stay away from him. Now him and his wife had messaged me and said, no, 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 you're up at the other end of the training center. We're going to be gone probably by the time you start. And if you're not, don't worry about it. So around 9, 30, 10, we're going to start on Saturday morning. All 12 of these babies will be going in the jog cart uh, for the first time ever on Saturday. Uh, we'll get that out of the way. This Saturday afternoon, I'm going to spend with the kids. I'm going to watch the Mohawk Millions card on Saturday evening. Sunday, just rest and relaxation after I get your videos done, of course. <laughs> Amy's going to kill me. And then uh, Monday, back to the Meadows for Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. And uh, next weekend is next weekend. I think it is. I have to be in Lexington next Friday or Saturday. Wow. This fall, I know we all want to get 2020 over with, but man, we hit the downslide of this roller coaster, didn't we? It is flying. September is flying by. Let's make sure we make the most of it. So, reach out. Tell me what you'd like to do in regards to Lexington. Uh, it's very important for me. We're going to start putting up some lists of horses I like um, and, and populate that, uh, that those forms so you guys can look at them. I think it went over really, really well. Kelly did a good job. Yeah, it wasn't perfect. But considering I gave her no time frame to get it done, she did an incredible job getting it, pulling it off. So um, another good week. Another good week. We salvaged it. Another good week at thestable.ca. Um, it's not over yet. Still got lots of racing left. And I will talk to you guys very, very soon. Take care.